Monsters do have their place in the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies, but not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV.
Ladies and gentlemen, I've devised a torture test between your writer and my Ronson comic. Put your thumb on the side of your light of it. Squeeze the light out of it. The Ronson Comet can. Find a dangerous, windy place and see if your flame will blow out. The Ronson Comet won't. Now, twist its neck and see if your lighter carries two spare flints and a replaceable spark wheel. The Ronson Comet does. Carefully turn out the lights and adjust your flame to cigarette, cigar, and pipe. Now try to inject your lighter with life-giving butane. One gulp from the Ronson multi-pill and the Comet can light for months. If your lighter can't do half the things the Ronson Comet can, get one and have your own torture test. day for Frankenberry, the world's super sweet new cereal. Fooey, here's the world's super sweet new cereal, Cold Chocula. Fickle, I've got berry flavored sweeties for monstrous strawberry flavor. Well, I've got chocolate sweeties for monstrous chocolate flavor. Frankenberry, Cold Chocula. Meow. <laughs> Frankenberry, Cold Chocula. Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Wednesday Night Scream Stream Minisodes. I'm your host, Spakenstein, joined as always by my very good friends, Mr. Evan Sink. Good evening. And Mr. Fresh Rogan. What's good, motherfuckers? <laughs> and you guys are joining us tonight for the season three premiere. And uh, you can see Cylarn's picture is on the screen right now, but I am about to kill him. I just kill. He's black he's and white now. He's about to get the axe. Yep, I just gave him the black and white. Oh no! There's a, we got a shout out from Thalm. Uh, I love all of you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Thalm. Uh, we're back, back rearing to go for an exciting season three. Uh, I hope I hope everybody enjoyed their break. Um. It was, uh, I hope it was productive for some of you. I, I know it was for me. Um, I just ended up watching more movies. Yeah, honestly. I mean, honestly, if I did anything else, it was just... <laughs> it was at the beach. Well, hey, vacation is certainly, you know, it's good to be well-rested. He, he comes, look at this man, he's very prepared. He comes back to the stream well-rested, ready to go, firing on all cylinders tonight. Um, sunburnt you forgot sunburnt well that goes without <laughs> saying what are you what are you not thinking man come on you can't be going out to the beach when you you know you're out and you're you're behind a desk most of the day so what do you think you can just go to the beach and not wear sunscreen come on fresh you were I mean, um a little bit and it didn't i didn't wear enough it didn't do not enough mm. have have you, did I you did really go to the beach if you didn't get sunburnt that's true. That's yeah, you bring back a little souvenir. Yeah, yeah, you bring back a little like starfish that you got from a, a, a roadside gift shop. <laughs> well, it's not. It's called be... like surf or right. wings. Wing. Or, yeah. <laughs> if you're not coming back with some kind of tchotchke, if multiple tchotchkes in tow, can you even say that you went to uh, 
a southern east coast beach i.e somewhere in south carolina that i won't say the exact name of but <laughs> <laughs> the only beach everyone the goes only to beach that carolina, everybody probably. Probably, yeah, that most well, people probably never heard of it yeah. it's good to hear that the tchotchke economy is still going strong mm-hmm. dude can we talk about how sketchy those stores are oh like, god dude i can't imagine you pull how up are. and there's just like three guys on heroin outside and you're like i just want to buy a hat <laughs> <laughs> when I was a I kid, I can get a, I can get a t-shirt airbrushed here. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff was sketchy. To, those places were sketchy to me when I was a kid. I can't imagine how it yeah. is now. Yeah, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. Well, yeah. Thanks for reporting back to us on that. It's good. Good to know. No that, worries. Uh, you know, it I'm in the field. Hasn't... I'm doing real investigative <laughs> journalism for you guys. It has changed and it has gotten worse. And Fre- we we can entrust Fresh to bring us all of uh, the freshest current events. Uh, he's on the ground. His, <laughs> yes, uh-huh. yes. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Keeping us fresh. Uh-huh. Yes, he really is. Um, God knows. God knows we need it. We're in season three now, boys. Holy hell um yeah, we gotta shake things up we gotta, yeah, it's gonna I mean, stale around here. so yeah we gotta be careful it's gonna we just start stinking up the place i mean we've been uh, i mean we got, uh, go ahead fresh we got yelled at by the lifeguard three times for what <laughs> um all right so there's this rule about umbrellas and uh mm, you can't no. you can't put them you can't put them further toward the water than the lifeguard stand is right yeah 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 and uh okay I, and I see my the mom, logic. yeah it's like obstructs their view of the water if you yeah. put like a bunch of umbrellas so uh i was like is it actually can't put posted this though like i've never i don't know if i've ever actually seen it posted i think it is okay so yeah i was like we can't put it here and uh you know my mom was like, yes, we can. And I was like, well, yeah, physically oh, we can God. put it here. <laughs> so we put it, I had to dig a fucking hole with like the whole digger thing and then put the umbrella in and fill the hole in and completely open up and expand the umbrella just to be told I had to move it again like three times. Don't before. you love that? Isn't that the best? <laughs> Do you think the lifeguard was just watching you the whole time? I'm just like, I'm going to wait until this guy's done. Yes, absolutely. I can confirm that he was probably watching you just like... <laughs> I can't believe this is, is going to do it. This is the 10th guy <laughs> I've had to tell the today. Way? I can't believe it. Look at this asshole. I'm just going to let him do it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go. So apparently, his apparently uh, li- uh, lifeguards go on lunch and just fuck everybody, I guess for an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, they just can't drown because uh, there's no lifeguard. So wow. they all left. So he ate because he has to wait an hour before he can even <laughs> get back in. That seems like the worst <laughs> beach to have a lunch break. I, uh, we, we did not have a lunch break at the beach that I worked on. We had to eat, we had to bring our lunch with us and eat it up on the stand. And if you didn't bring your lunch that day, you were screwed unless you could get somebody to bring. Well, see, there were like two lifeguards in the stand, right? And I was like, oh, cool. So one can go to lunch. And they're like, no, we're both going to lunch at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. See, no, no. I can't believe they do that. (laughs) When I dug, when I dug the hole, they were at lunch. So I had to do all that. And then they just came walking up, eating a sandwich. Like, oh, you can't have that here. (laughs) Which is like the worst. Like the, you as the patron probably nothing pisses you off more because you're just like seeing them walk up with their sandwiches like what where the fuck have these guys been what are, what's going on here <laughs> and now and I the just first to, thing they do when they come yeah. back is tell me to break I it down do get out of here yep get it out of here get it out of here yeah that's you know the all... cops of the beach laying down the law <sighs> the long arm of the law the long they're living like larry law living like larry god yeah i mean i all beaches are different you know every beach has different rules and that beach in particular i'm not even going to try to understand how why they i'm gonna go i want to go to a beach with no rules Ooh, lawless he'll buy a beach umbrella like a few weeks oh my god (laughs) someone got yeah yeah, you didn't know i was gonna bring that up hailfire uh 859 first time chatter thank you for bringing that up yes that did have that's why when you when you said that it was something with an umbrella i thought maybe that was some kind of new rule that they had because what happened yeah somebody did get 
So impaled. that explains why they they didn't want me to joust with the umbrella. Oh, I was trying yeah. to joust another family, and they wouldn't let me do yeah, it. They, they might have had some problems with that. Yeah, it might have been a little too soon for uh, jousting sense, yeah. on the beach. But you can only have one impaling a year. I think that's their quota. <laughs> yep, only They'd one. Already met it. Yep. I think they've got a sign on the side of the lifeguard stand. You know, this many days uh, since our last <laughs> impalement. Uh, it's probably do. I mean, hey, they're they're lucky. It's summer's almost over, so their season anyway is probably almost over. <laughs> Silar they almost made Silar it. Silar has yeah, confirmed the impaler. Silar, that's what happens when you piss off the wind. Yeah, it just uh, you know it, it rears back to get you real hard. I mean. You know, you can't be safe anywhere these days. You know, you can't even relax on a beach anymore without getting <laughs> impaled. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it is Cylarn. Cylarn is the Myrtle Beach. They should have minded their own fucking business. <laughs> the, Myrtle, the Myrtle Beach mutilator. Uh, should have known it was my own brother who could have figured, should have figured. Um, Insane insane well i hope you enjoyed your vacation fresh i also uh, went on a little uh mountain vacation it was um fly at the myrtle beach impaler ah i like that silar that's yes a very good i yes that would be another great fictional serial killer for that town which surprise there aren't more serial killers uh dude i'll beach. dominate a fucking bowl of cheerios i swear to god Oh my god! I'm killing it, dude. I'm killing the whole fucking bowl in one, like literally two minutes flat. I swear to God, he's a killer. Look out! Uh, speaking of uh, killing, uh, tonight's uh, little public domain offering is certainly on that subject. Uh, and for season three, we are going to be bringing you episodes of a 1958 anthology series called The Veil, starring Boris Karloff. So we, Ooh. yes, so we, last season we were spending our Wednesdays with Bela Lugosi, and now we get to spend our Wednesdays with Boris Karloff, and we are kind of Harkening back to season one, when we watched an anthology series, we watched One Step Beyond, and this actually came out, well, <clears throat> let me rephrase that, this was produced a year before One Step Beyond, and a year before Twilight Zone. Uh, crazy thing, though, it was actually never aired. Uh, the studio really? that, Yeah, the studio that made it went bankrupt, and so 10 episodes just never were aired on television of this show, and it ended up in the public domain. So uh, much to our benefit tonight, because this show is a lot of fun. And uh, Karloff is Karloff takes center stage. He's in every if, if this was never if this was never aired, how how well known was this back in the day? Not not this show, because Karloff ended up doing a an anthology series in 1962 called Thriller, or it was like Boris Karloff's Thriller. And it was an hour long anthology series and he was just the host. But this was, again, this was before Twilight Zone, which is, you know, it seems like the year after this was produced was when anthology series, as far as like horror, mystery, paranormal, when they really kind of hit big with, as far as saturation and this kind of missed out on it you know it never it's saw ironic the... that it's ironic that this series seems like it was stuck in the twilight zone it really did it really is a bizarre occurrence for a show about bizarre occurrences to you know never never see the light of day <laughs> until you know it finally starts being released on home video and then on you know dvds very low budget packs i have right here the one that i bought or yeah i guess i guess i bought it i picked it out it, uh they were selling this at ross dress for less uh yeah I was, I was there with my mom don't and fuck, I was, you don't have to say the dress for less part you do have this it's ross dress for less I that's was, like saying i'm going to mcdonald's i'm loving it i was, did, I, I, I was drinking did my you... coca-cola classic and i was 
<laughs> and I was at Ross Dress for Les, and we just got out of Costco wholesale. And I said, uh, Mom, you know, I'd really... I see this Boris Karloff show I've never heard of before. Like, can we, can I get this? She said, yes. And it was really cheap. Um, as you know, all the DVDs that are public domain, if you're selling them for anything, it's kind of insane. You're making a profit because these movies don't cost anything. That's IE why we're showing them here. Um, and so <laughs> our overheads real low on this show real low clearance clearance uh and uh you know <laughs> we're, all, like we're bargain bin uh, we're, we're from raw stress for less we we came right out of raw stress for less on poverty row um that's where our raw stress for less is located um but no, I mean, <laughs> this show is a lot of fun. Uh, again, Karloff is in every episode playing a character. So it's, you know, it's a little different from John Newland, who we saw in One Step Beyond, who just kind of appeared at the beginning and the end to kind of quickly wrap everything up. The Rod Serling bit. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of stodgy, boring. Picture this. Yeah, imagine if you will. Um, Car Give me another cigarette. Karloff is, you know, he has his own style. That very much, again, the fact that this is before Twilight Zone and before One Step Beyond, it is, it is interesting to see Karloff. You know, he's just kind of doing what he he's just being a reliable performer, a performer, a reliable host. Um, but again, it just didn't. It never saw the light of day until, I guess, probably the 70s or the 80s. And it's uh, 10 episodes, so we'll get to every week. We'll get to watch a new one, and um should be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Um, we'll see, you know, some familiar faces. We'll see some familiar names uh, from, you know, other shows, other movies that we've watched. So it's we're in store for a good time i i do enjoy this show so i'm i'm happy to be bringing it Cylon wanted me to show it earlier and i was like i need to this is too good i you know it's like let's start with one step beyond which you know i'm not gonna talk i mean again we haven't even watched this yet so i'm not even gonna go begin to compare the two but uh you can go about <laughs> back on youtube and look at our one step beyond episodes and you can gauge our opinions about one step beyond um but i hadn't seen that before i have seen these and they're fun so i'm very excited karloff is great as always so gonna be a lot of fun um let's see before uh we get into it tonight uh boys uh tonight's title of tonight's episode is again vision of crime uh and i think i believe i've already hinted that there's a a murder on the way um so uh any any guesses as to what the supernatural paranormal what do you what do you think we're going to be dealing with here uh vision of a crime you know that should give you some some clues so uh i'm a little you know i'm not super sure on the timeline but i think uh my prediction is that this is a a, a prequel to that so raven oh, okay okay it, elaborate on that i'm getting a vision a vision of crime and then someone's gonna say oh snap there we go <laughs> there it is there it is <laughs> that that was it oh snap and uh fresh what do you what, what do you think here what what are you um what do you say um, i don't Crime? i don't think it's a full prequel i think it's going to be a sequel that takes place after uh that's so raven's arc was over oh and this is going to be raven uh fitting into the normal everyday adult world and working her retail job at kmart but didn't they yeah. don't didn't they already do spiritual that spiritual prequel it's well huh? I mean, well, I think they might have already done that, Fresh. I think they might that might be a show right now. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, I think, you're uh, I think it, yeah, this is we're maybe. watching. Maybe. Oh well, yeah, that's right. No, that's a good point. Yes, that is the prediction you have made. So, uh, let's see what the uh, that's a Raven connection is um, tonight. Uh, uh, if you boys have it queued up, 
I'm a man, but yes, I have a queued up. All right. Excuse me. We. I'm sorry. I should. We. 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 You tried to get me clarified straight on this earlier, and I have flubbed again. I'm sorry. Men, are you ready? Do you have it queued up? Yes, yes King. Sir. I have it. Sir. Oh my <laughs> God! Get out! Get out! We're not, no. No. All right, sorry. Uh, no, let's try that again. All yes, right. Daddy, I have it queued oh, up. Oh, my God. All right. Well, since you boys <laughs> have it right. queued up, we're going to go ahead and get started with The Veil, Vision of a Crime, Vision of Crime, right now. Yes, Daddy. Oh, my God. Stop it. Ah. There's no need for you to become a... Ah, hold on. Sorry, mine got a little bit off. Okay, wait. Okay, <laughs> Oh, my God. On. You jumped halfway hold through. On. Yeah, I did. Hold on. Stop. Everybody, hold on. Stop. <laughs> Go oh back. We're Stop gonna. Back we're gonna up. do this. We gotta right. teach. We gotta. We gotta tell the teacher how to use the fucking projector. Okay. Now. All right. Are you guys ready? All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Here we go. Yeah, I don't know why it did that. that why was... is the mouse still on the screen? <laughs> Get out of here! Don't. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Give me shit. <laughs> You don't know how hard it is to run a show and be the host and do the technical things that I have to do. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, Hello. I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. He's a consummate gentleman. Tonight's story is again based on one of those true but utterly unexplainable happenings which occur time and again from country to country and from age to age. George Bosman <laughs> was a modern long man pause. of his time in every sense of the word and had taken them long emphysema another, breaths. He very probably would have been the last man in the world. He's waiting on them to turn the page they're holding beside the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> You're probably right. Is Karloff a smoker? Oh yeah, big time for sure. Okay. You can go. There are behind the scenes from the Frankenstein movies, oh, behind oh, the scenes so stills of him with there. cigarettes in his hand, and as now, in the monster makeup, and they're great. <laughs> He prepared to close for the night. Weird. Not a lot of smokers in the fifties. No, no, not many. Uh oh. It's not like there was cigarette ad weren't cigarette ads everywhere. Uh, oh. Wow, he really got shot. Yeah, did you? Yeah, did you see that? That was he really hammed George up that death Parker scene. Prepared to retire, completely unaware of the incredible events which were about to occur. Completely unaware. It's really ominous framing on this ah. face. Uh oh. You can see the edges of the cutout, dude. This is trash. <laughs> You're a wizard, Bosworth. <laughs> captain. Classic captain. captain. What is He's got the smoke, the chops, and the I chops and the pipe and the cufflinks. I'm afraid that's quite impossible, sir. Oh, please, I'm afraid. Something's happened. Are you ill, Mr. Bosworth? No, no. Don't make me turn this boat around. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't explain, Captain, but I must return at once. Mr. Bosworth, we're a hundred and fifty miles from around. Dover, and I have a schedule to maintain. <laughs> if I were to turn around and go back without good and sufficient reason, I would in all probability lose my position. But this is just moving the camera up and down <laughs> like we are totally on a boat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're, yeah, a hundred percent. Perhaps if you could tell me why... But, but my, I think my, my brother is... I have a schedule to maintain. We all know about schedule, how important you, schedules are. But it's terribly important. I'm sorry, Mr. Bosworth, but I can let you off at a stand. There you can make connections with another ship and be back in England by tomorrow morning. What time will we dock? We should be there within the hour. I pray God, Captain, we're not too late. Bullet wound through the arc. Fired at close range. Man's been shot. 
He's dead right enough. From the looks Here of things, is. nothing has been taken except money. Cash drawers <laughs> empty. As your Which classic me to deduce incompetent that policeman. The motive for the crime was robbery. Got that, Orton? Yes, sir. I checked the Bosworth house. George isn't there. The place is shut up tight. That's odd. Him and Art usually close the shop together. <laughs> are you sure you heard the shots at 9.45? Right you are, Chester. 9.45 exactly. I didn't Just vote for, for him. It, it, it is. It is very yeah, <laughs> Python-esque. <laughs> it is very flying circus. police business, and I'm here in my official capacity. Until I've solved this crime, I'll trouble you to remember that I'm a sergeant in Her Majesty's Constabulary. Oh, I am sorry. From now on, I'll remember, Chester. Sorry. There's obviously like a you condescending way to play a British policeman well, that <laughs> actors choose to play a pot of play a certain evil. way. Just before retiring, as you might say. You know how Alfie likes to get to bed early. Yes, yes, yes. Get on with it. Well, <laughs> I no sooner touched the kettle to the stove when I heard the shots. So I said to Alfie, that sounds like shots. And Alfie said, no. So I said to Alfie, Alfie, them was shots. And Alfie said, Never mind. This is so Alfie funny. Said, what did you Ridiculous. Do? <laughs> well, the only light that was on was in Art Bosworth's shop. So I ran down here to see if he'd heard them too. Imagine me horror and surprise to find poor Mr. Bosworth lying there in a pool of blood. Aha. Uh -huh. And whose blood would you say it was? Uh, uh, how long would you estimate this was after you first heard the shots, Mr. Swing? Are we sure this isn't a comedy? Well, I mean... Thank you very much, Mrs. Click. That'll be all. But I have Certainly, you know. If you have anything more to say, you can make a statement at the police station. But I know who done the murder. <laughs> Mrs. The Clinton, murder. You saw the murder? <laughs> Yes. Stewie in her frame right. <laughs> now, just a minute, Constable, I'll handle this. Now then, Bertha, why didn't you give us this valuable information before this? <laughs> it's I was valuable. Until I was so rudely interrupted. Are you insinuating that I was rude? Sergeant, I'm... Uh, may I suggest uh, the murderer? Huh? The murderer? Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Why are they saying, they're all saying the yes name, like that. Yes, yes. His name yes. is yes. Albert Ketch. How do you know that, Mrs. Bing? I Albert Ketch. He created ketchup. <laughs> oh, yes, Albert Ketch, the creator of ketchup. Very famous man. <laughs> are you sure? My sight's as good as yours, Chester Wilmore. Uh, Sergeant, uh, I round him up? Why, yes, Constable, do that. And see if you can find out what become of George Bosworth. Uh, why not ask Mrs. Clink, sir? I'm sure I don't know, Constable. But why not ask Miss Julie Westcott? She's his fiancée. Mm. She ought to know. I'll do that, Mrs. Clink. All right, now. Off with you. Home, all of you, if you please. This year's shop will off. be closed till further notice. Move along, please. <laughs> wow, what a, what a great now, but set. Why don't you confess and save us all a lot of trouble? All nice and tidy, eh? Because I didn't shoot Art Bosworth, that's why. Aha! Uh -huh. How do you know he was shot? You told me. Oh. <laughs> what were you doing in the apothecary shop at that time? I was there to collect a debt what was owed me. What was the debt for? Well, you see, I do a bit of carpenter work in my spare time, being at it with my tools, as you might say. And I'll build a set of shelves for Mr. Bosworth. Here, oh, several right, weeks ago. Yeah, and it's very... <laughs> well, uh, well, there was a slight misunderstanding between us, as you might Missing some teeth, uh -huh. for sure. That don't mean I killed him. What was the cause of this uh, misunderstanding? While I was building the shelves, a case of his medicines got them. Bosworth got <laughs> terrible excited. Claimed I'd done it careless like. Said they was worth more than the shelves and, and he wouldn't pay me. And so you killed him. That's not true. I don't even own a gun. A likely story. Why, I wouldn't be surprised if you wasn't doing a bit of poaching in your spare time. Oh, it's a nasty thing to say. <laughs> Poaching's a very serious offense. Poaching? I have a mind to enter charges against you. Sergeant, this man's being charged with murder, not with poaching. You hear that, Albert? <laughs> <laughs> murders the charge, don't you? Try to throw us off the track with all this talk about poaching. 
<laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Bugs Bunny in him. But do you know I'm not the kind of man who'd kill a chap in cold blood? Albert Titch, you're making it very hard for us. Very well. You won't cooperate. We'll have to drag it out of you. We'll start all over again. You're gonna drag it out of you. They're gonna they're gonna dress him up in, yeah. in women's clothing yeah. and drag it out of him. <laughs> Come in, We're gonna drag it out of you. We oh, have ways of making you talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, George. Heart is. Heart's dead. Too late. Too late. Too late. George, you were on your yeah, way. Yeah, bro, you were watching that you get live. I had a. Should it? Really, it should have been called wrong. Vision of a Crime Live. Who? Who, who shot him? <laughs> who told you he was shot? This isn't a premonition. So you're you're seeing this live. You can't do anything about it. We're on Crime Cam. <laughs> 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 that's the show. I want to make a show that's, called Crime uh, Cam. Uh, Darling, I it's know live footage of people shot. committing crimes. You weren't here. <laughs> How do you know you didn't do it? <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't Julie, done that yet. Take me on trust for now. Albert Ketch had nothing to do with Hart's death. <laughs> Darling, you are a Isn't that impractical jokers? Essentially, I guess. I know, yeah. it, it, it gets to the line, to right to the line, between a, a prank and a crime. There's a fine line, right? Darling, you ask me to trust you. I do. You know that. Can't you even tell me how you can be so certain? Julie, have I ever shown... Any signs of insanity? Of course not. Mm. Well, I haven't told you yet how I came back so quickly or why. I never even got to France. You didn't get to I France? Had. A vision. Of what? The whole thing. The whole thing? Yes. I saw the murder being committed. No, they did not. Really he did. Fresh. I'll show it to you. Yes. George, I'll show it to you. It's super tell funny. Tell me exactly what you thought that you saw. I could see them doing that. That's intense, though. Well, I was though. washing, getting ready for bed, and when I looked into the basin, I saw into the, the basin, the basin, exactly the wash basin. Right when I looked into the wash basin, you must have been dreaming. No, I saw Hart by the shelves, and then I saw the murderer come in and shoot him. You saw the murderer? <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> Who uh, was <laughs> it? <Wine. laughs> but it wasn't Albert Ketch, I'm sure of that. George, you can't tell anybody this. But I must. Ketch is innocent. Julie, you believe me, don't you? Well, what difference does it make whether I... A great I... deal of difference. <laughs> George, I'm I not crazy, right? You tell this story to the police. No, that's a chance I must take. That's a chance you must not take. But tell Hank, Ketch. Listen to me, George. There's nothing you can do. If Ketch is innocent, he has nothing to fear. But you, if you tell this fantastic tale to the police, you'll be ruined. Julia, a man's life is in danger. How can I think of myself? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, like anybody's that you know selfless these you days. Call you Get out of here. <laughs> and how will I feel? Hearing people talk behind your back, pretending I don't hear them whispering. Julie, this is not the... You're putting yourself, you know how he others the before shop? yourself. Oh, you get out of here, bro. Well, Such a terrible happen. person. What age do you, you live in? Will do business with a get man out. Man. You oh, saw geez. the murder, in it? In it. <laughs> I'm sorry. What would you guys do if uh, you had a vision thinks. of crime? I've got to try. Well, I guess Probably it's the nothing. same exact thing as if you witness a crime in real life. Like, well, I mean, Very well, if I saw a vision, you I'd, you, you know, I'd go tell somebody. Dude, like, imagine being on the witness no, 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 stand no, no, and you're like, I wasn't me. there, but I had a dream <laughs> that it definitely happened I, and it was I'm him. I'm not worried about people thinking I'm crazy if I tell them that I like had a dream or that I saw something. I don't care. Call me crazy if you want. If I saw something, I'm going to tell somebody. And that is going to take us to the break, which again, if you're new 
to the mini sods uh any of the stream we have breaks but on the mini sods we just do one short break and uh you know especially we'll get here. up and stretch our legs yeah i mean especially here when the commercial break is perfectly built into the middle of the episode with the nice little fade to black and it's like all right well this is perfect unlike phantom Creeps, wait are we supposed to stop it wait mine's still going wait what really i have the i have the it's in the um it's it's in the Discord. hang on what's going on you you know what you know what's, <laughs> you. Uh, what's all this then what's all this that yeah you're what's all this then? carlos constable bumbling constable but again that is another cool thing about this show if you are a classic horror fan and you've you're used to seeing Karloff play bad guys, even if you're not a, a classic horror fan, if you're used to seeing Karloff play bad guys, that's one of the cool things about this show is that he gets to he gets to show his range. He gets to he has to do a little comedy. He gets to do a little drama. Uh, you know, he. I had, I had no idea he could be a, a comedic constable. <laughs> yeah, Silarn, you're you're It'd right. Be but, John well, be, well, because yes, because Boris Karloff was always a performer. He was never exclusively <laughs> a boogeyman. And and yes, Silarn, you're right. Because he was a performer, he was a disappointment to his father because all of his his brothers were like diplomats and like you know they did like they did big things in England. But Boris Karloff came to America and pursued an acting career. And um, yeah, like his brothers were civil servants. His dad, his dad's like, "What are you making your stupid little fucking movies?" Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's in a nutshell probably what it was like. <laughs> um, and so Karloff, you know, no I mean, son of mine's gonna be a monster. I yeah, little <laughs> did he know, if he only knew what a monster he had made. Um, no, Karloff is again the quintessential monster and again it's you can easily debate between Karloff and Lugosi and all the other horror movie actors as far as like who really who's really got the best acting chops I'm not going to say that Karloff is better than Lugosi because I don't think that he is but I do think that much like Lugosi Karloff is reliable so like here you can put him in the role of the ridiculous constable and he's gonna do a good job um because it'd be more unusual to see uh lugosi in that role well but that's the thing too is that lugosi wanted that the same opportunities lugosi wanted to do comedy that's why he did terrible comedies at the end of his life like Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla because he wanted to do comedy. And if that's the only comedy that you're being offered, well, you'll take it. It's better than no work at all, but it's still, well, I shouldn't say no work. He was always working. It just wasn't always film work, but it's one of those things that you're, you know, you're going to, nobody wants to be shoehorned, you know? And yes, Silar, and I also enjoy Lugosi's Sesame Street appearance where he <laughs> battles the count. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you can go to the Screamstream Twitter page where uh, you, you can see some screenshots from that epic showdown between Lugosi and Count Von Count. Um, it's, you know, it's really something. Uh, but, you know, regardless, it's... The, all of these actors that got shoehorned into horror roles, they were, at the end of the day, they were actors. They could do it all. And there was much more than just these ridiculous horror movies, cheesy horror movies that these guys, they didn't ex try, they didn't want to exclusively do that. It's just kind of where most of them ended up, unfortunately. But they love to work. All these guys, they love to work. You got to give them that. Um. Yes. Well, you know, Silarn. If if Lugosi was more of an educational count, you know, maybe he would have had a little more longevity. He would have, you know. Are you gonna count the liquid? Well, you you know you measure it's liter. You're well, you know. I don't know if they. How do you count liquid? You know, you measure in liters. It's like I have three liquids. One, one liter. Um, you know, who knows? I want um, your blood. <laughs> I 
Yeah. One, one ah, blood. Ah, 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 ah. God almighty. You gotta love it. You got I mean How much if, blood do you guys need? Uh we need like two or three. <laughs> two, two or three what? Bloods. Oh, two blood. two or three human full humans worth bloods worth of I need two people's worth of blood, please. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, they need two or three bloods, and then they hand you, like, a gun. They're like, go get them. <laughs> and then they say they're on 55th Street. Oh, my God. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, those bloods. Of course, of yes. course. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go to this quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we are going to get into the exciting conclusion of Vision of crime. Let's fucking go. Alright. Igor, go and get me what I crave. a better orange soda made with more natural orange flavor than ever before try shasta it's got the bright color the sweet smell and the great taste of oranges shasta it's the orange soda that can make anybody happy you're going to do a scene with boris karloff your lines will appear right here Read them loud and clear. Come in. You know why I've asked you here. You must convince the villagers that I'm harmless. You're trembling. Are you afraid? Have some nice hot coffee. It's butternut. Like it? Butternut has found a way of making coffee richer without being bitter. Butternut has found a way of making coffee richer without being bitter. Take this. Oh, don't worry. I've lots more. Butternut coffee. Regular and instant. Rich but never bitter. And we are back. So yeah, those those are some fun commercials. I do really love that Boris Karloff commercial because it is silly and I need more uh, call and response interactive commercials. I was gonna say it's that's the cool part is interactive. So you're you know yeah it, they should have made if if there would have been more Dora the Explorer style horror content that Boris Karloff and Lugosi did, <laughs> then my life would be complete. <laughs> Because... Can you say Shasta? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shasta, orange, cola. I mean that was that was that was great too. Uh again, we were I, I don't know if that was an ad for Halloween or just again, you're right, fresh. M monsters I mean they still are. Monsters are ubiqu the or these monster characters are ubiquitous enough in our American pop culture that they're you could do a monster commercial any time of the year. You could do a Frankenstein. Like, again, I mean, <clears throat> there have been... Pa do y'all remember that Cheerios commercial with Frankenstein's monster and the bee, right? The animated bee and that Y'all probably don't. That's from, like, the early 2000s. That used to come on all the time. Uh <laughs> you guys remember this? Probably not. Anyway, it was really popular. It was. No, it really... <laughs> oh, my God. I can't... Siler knows what I'm talking about. I used to see that ad all the... We used to see that ad all the time, and I loved it because it uses clips from bride of frankenstein but then it has the honey nut cheerios b like talking to him and so it's a fun it's a fun little bit and uh <laughs> everybody looked this up this is great are you are you watching it right now yeah oh yes yeah, sh <laughs> uh, sh share yeah share it in the chat it's it is a lot of fun um 
and that's Karloff, you know, that's, that's actual, like the Shasta, the Shasta commercial was, um, yeah, that was just an actor who, again, Frankenstein, that whole look, I mean, it is like inescapable from Karloff. Like again, this, my t-shirt tonight, that's, that's Karloff's Frankenstein. It's, you know, that's the person you think of when you think of Frankenstein's monster, you think of Karloff. I like um, it that that Frankenstein just like looks like Karloff. Like they they did makeup and stuff, but not <clears throat> not like that much. Like he still has the strong brow and the kind of square <laughs> head. It really, naturally. yeah. I mean, it really. That's the thing that anybody that they've tried to emulate the look after they're wearing so much makeup that before was really just a lot of Carlos natural facial features. That was why he was chosen for the role was because he had such a distinct look anyway. <laughs> they said, Hey bro, you're ugly as fuck. You'd be perfect for this. I said, Hey, you weren't supposed to go to makeup for this audition. I mean, Carlos, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Karloff had already been in Hollywood for uh, at least a decade and had not really had any big defining roles. So like it was essentially it was whoa this guy looks wild let's let's throw some makeup on him and see what happens because you know they tried it with Lugosi but the whole the, you know it just there are different sources on why Lugosi never played Frankenstein's monster in the original Frankenstein why that fell through because he was supposed to play the monster and there's never really I I mean I'm sure there is a definitive reason but I've always seen different Dude. things so. I felt kind of bad when I saw that story you shared. Ah, uh, uh, yes, on our Twitter, on the Scream Stream Twitter page. Yeah, on um, the Scream Stream Twitter. Yeah, there, I was like, I made fun of his opioid stuff <laughs> so much, and I'm like, God damn, I kind of get it now. Well, and I've talked about it too, and I've, we've talked about his war service, but with not really a lot of details. And it was, I don't know the veracity. Again, it was just a tweet. Um, and it was a tweet from another person. It wasn't like they didn't, you know, reference a source or anything. But basically, the tweet talked about Lugosi's service, and it said that once he was taken off of the Eastern Front, that's when. And I know Silarn had mentioned that he was in the Ski Patrol. Well, apparently, the Ski Patrol had a fifty percent mortality rate, and he got wounded three times. And there was one time that he was having to hide under a pile of bodies of his like of his like fellow soldiers it was like having wow. to hide under all their bodies to like, he, like hit under his friends dead bodies yeah. so that they wouldn't find him which is if true that's real horror you know to the fullest extent and you know yeah when you think about that and then you think about Lugosi's addictions and all these other things I mean you can't you know the man saw a lot of shit dealt with a lot of shit i mean he wasn't just some hoity-toity actor that you know i mean all these guys that participated in world war one were scarred by world war one I. I don't think karloff was in world war one but i know the director of frankenstein and bride of frankenstein james whale he was in world war one and he was scarred by it but i don't think karloff was in Silarn, if you had a Twitter, you'd know what we were talking about. Get you need to get a Twitter. I've told Silarn for months now that he needs to get a Twitter because he would genuinely like Twitter. I think. I think there would be a lot of. Hey, things. Silarn, there's porn on Twitter. So, I mean, what are the <laughs> reasons? You need? There you go. Now you got him. Um, yeah. Yes. He just signed up. Silarn, Basil Rathbone is another great uh, World War One slash. I mean, he's not so much a horror movie actor in the sense that these other guys are, but in his later life, he was considered a horror movie actor. But um, yeah, see, Silarn, I should if if I would have known porn, I should have known porn was gonna win you over. Fresh, uh, Fresh was on your wavelength. I was not. Um, <laughs> you know, it's. <laughs> I mean, Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is a glorious thing. It really is. Um, so yeah, I mean, we could talk about the the war careers of all of our favorite uh, golden age Hollywood actors, but uh, I think that we will uh, just go ahead and get into uh, the exciting conclusion of Vision of Crime if you boys have it queued up. 
I do. I'm ready. I'm a man, by the way. Oh, sorry. I did. Uh, see? <laughs> All right. Now you gotta gotta find out. Come up with some kind of penalty system because this is the third time that I've I, I've done this. Sorry. So since if you men have it queued up, <laughs> you get enough strikes, then you yeah. just have to shut down the stream. What we'll do is we'll rig a bucket of strikes pig's and blood. And we we'll rig a, a bucket of pig's blood right over my head, and if I mess up three times on the next stream, the pig's blood <laughs> will spill over me, and I'll look like Carrie. I have to sit. But you have through. to wear a prom dress. Right. Well, and that goes without saying. It's the prom dress is a given. And then I have to sit here for the remainder of the show in a, a prom dress covered in pig's blood. So um, I that sounds like a, um, a the punishment fits the crime, I think. Um, you know, but... Um, well, luckily, I, I think they just put a, a prom dress on future monsters. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's the only place I would get my prom dress. If they if they start making dresses, um, you know, it'll I'll be the I'll be the first one. I mean, pretty much every new thing that is got some kind of monster on it, I'm gonna buy. Um, I just can't can't help myself. Um, what are you gonna do? Yes. Got gotta love future monsters. Um, all right. So you boys, uh, ah, all right. Pig's blood. Release the pig's blood. <sighs> um, all right. So if you men have it queued up, so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I have it queued up. Okay. <laughs> you men. All right. You men. All right. You men. You men. <laughs> you men. Men will be men. You just say it with a bunch of contempt. You men. Hey, well, if you men have it queued up, then here we go. Nothing back there, sir. Oh. Well, in that case, we'll have to continue our search in here. He really does give me John Cleese vibes in this. Oh, he he it does. It is. It really well, makes me wonder like how hard is, is John was attention. John Cleese like channeling Boris Karloff? See, but you, you guys are you guys are saying John Cleese, but I'm actually thinking more Graham Chapman actually. Uh, really? which, another Python. They both played dumb constables, but I don't know. I don't know what it is about Graham Chapman, but. They're definitely, you know, that's what I'm saying. It must have been a caricature in England to make fun of constables in this Why manner. Why do you say that? It, is, yeah. it probably comes out of, like, stage traditions, like music halls and, like, sketches. Well, you like, again. you know, what makes you not so burlesque, sure but essentially out of, there's probably sketches in burlesque that make fun I of dumb policemen all the time. I have to take my word for it, but Albert Ketch had nothing to do with it. Well, that's rather a large order, Mr. Bosworth. Asking us to accept your word without anything to back it up. Mr. Bosworth, <laughs> sir. I assume you can prove your whereabouts at the time of the crime. Whereas uh, I can, I was on a boat on my way to France. Mr. Bosworth. On your way to France. To inherit your brother's estate after his death. Why, no one. I'm the only... So I think this Just cop back here is a famous sure the actor. Means no offense, uh, but um, let me fill you in on the facts. Kind of famous. We have a high I think he was in The Howling, which if you haven't seen The Howling, great noticed. 80s werewolf he had movie. Opportunity. Sergeant, have a look here. Who's wearing a bald cap? Looks like an old. <laughs> the lighting on Karloff, I think, makes him look Yeah, it looks so almost like he's front. bald. Boris. What has he got like a middle, like a part down the well, middle? Apparently. I think it's just where it's white. I'm when sure the light hits the it in the front, it looks like it's the same color as his skin. That, that Albert Ketch had nothing to do with it? Why do you say that? What would Ketch be doing with a little gun like that? Mr. Bosworth's right, sir. It's hard to accept the fact that Albert Ketch would be in possession of a Derringer. Why? It would be given to him by somebody. Oh, he couldn't afford it. So you refuse still to tell us why you... Oh, wow. He's too fun. poor. Oh. Uh. I can't <laughs> tell you, Sergeant. I'll submit a possibility to you, Mr. Bosworth. I'll submit it's uh, possible you needed money badly enough to want your brother out of the way. Hmm. I'll submit that your insistence on Albert Ketch's innocence may very well be more than just a desire to see justice done. 
And what do you have to say to that, Mr. Bosworth? Nothing. Am I under arrest? Not as yet, but I shall have to ask you to remain within call. It, it I, I can see the cleaseness actually the more cleaseness like when he is there some particular sketch i can't remember which one it is oh, good evening, Mrs. it might be the wizzo oh, chocolate where all the chocolates are like bad <laughs> have you seen you know that one <laughs> like he plays yeah. a cop in that one and he's like right, a dumb yeah, constable kind of character. yeah yeah mm. thank you he was a fine man your brother a fine man all was willing to extend credit until I wish Friday. people still dress Only like this, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> you go out to a bar and it was a everybody's shop. in a Maybe suit. Maybe it'll come back. I can well imagine, but Everyone has seven have layers of clothes on. Well, it's going to get too well, warm for that. You need to start a bar where that's the dress code. Oh, bless you. Where else could it be? <laughs> it's got to be. you got to keep it really cold. you have to keep it really cold in that bar, though. Has nobody told you? That Chester Wilmore. I am the most important witness. Oh. Are there any other witnesses? Not a one, and no more are needed, I can tell you that. Of course, Miss Westcott might have seen the old thing had she been there five minutes earlier. Julie, what? what's she got to do with it? Of course, she might have been killed. Oh. She had. Tell me. I love that. <laughs> How does Julie fit into all this? Well, <laughs> I'd uh, just step out of my house for a breath of air. Yeah, not but not quite a python pepper me. pot, but pretty and close. Going into the apothecary shop. Or what and do they call them? No, what do they call them? Is that what they shots. call them? They call their old lady I something. I can't remember what they call them. There goes Albert Ketchup tearing down the street. Naturally, I got the police. And it was hardly no time at all before they had him clapped in the pokey. Julie never said anything about it. Oh, I dare say she didn't want to worry you. So oh, it's the first time I've ever known her to worry about anyone. <sighs> what do you mean by that? I'm not the one to talk about a body when they're not present to defend themselves. But everyone knows as I was Julie West Say what you will about people in old England or Victorian England, whenever this is, but what are you at saying? least they have high morals, or at least they're, they're portraying them like they do. What do you mean? She's like, I'm not going to talk about somebody when they're not around. I'm not going to talk about somebody behind their back. But then she proceeded to do that. But isn't that what everybody says? I'm not going to talk about somebody behind their back. But... <laughs> but I heard. I heard. I heard. Yeah. I heard she. She ain't even married to him. Don't pay any attention to me. You better Jesus get home Christ, and get fucking, some rest. And I'll be saying. Like medieval night. times. Look at that cup. <laughs> So they just fucking forged it real quick. Well, uh, you know, the pewter cups fresh out of the, fresh out of the still. George, darling, I've been frantic. Where have you been? I've been walking. Walking's not a place. <laughs> oh, yes, that new, new, walking that England. new uh, yes. store, walking. George, are they mad? Yes. How can they think you had anything to do with it? They have the murderer. It's a new shoe store. They haven't. I like how he took his jet, his coat off, and then he had a three-piece suit under it. <laughs> <laughs> you stop saying that. The so many layers. I would be enough? so hot. I would be Same. sweating. So I, my pit him stains him through that jacket would be. <laughs> I think that's the idea, though. You wear so many layers, it can't that's soak it. all the way through. I guess. Is that why people are wearing so <laughs> many layers to hide their stink? Trouble between you and Harley. Yeah, that's what it is. He had to wash himself in a bowl of water. <laughs> you know how yeah, well, I was. <laughs> Except he thought I was too ambitious, didn't he? Well, Hart was an old-fashioned man. He thought a woman's place was in the home. George. They, you know I only want. They have a bench in there. <laughs> <laughs> A woman needs security, a home, children, a husband she can be proud of. I know, you've been very patient. <laughs> well, not really, George. 
There were times during the last five years when I wanted Not to really. Scream. I killed your brother. I <laughs> wanted to say to Hart, why won't you pay George enough money so we can be married? He's earned it. He deserved it. But that's all over now. We can be married right away, can't we, George? Well, once a decent interval has gone by... Oh, darling, we'll be so happy. Mrs. George Bosworth. I can't wait to see my friend's faces when I tell uh, she's taking his first they name, too. Happen, you know, really. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's commitment. They were snickering behind my back. Wow. As if I couldn't tell what they yeah, were did, Isn't that what your wife that's did, Julie Evan? Westcott. She isn't getting any younger. Right, yeah. yeah. Your first and last name. She may not get any more chances. <laughs> Jesus. Aren't you exaggerating just a little? Well, perhaps just a little. Now, promise me you'll think only happy thoughts while I make us some tea. It's like a park bench. Sitting on my park bench. Dun, dun, dun. No. But it has upholstery. It is upholstered, yes. It's strange. I don't like this. <laughs> Julie? Yes, dear? About Albert Ketch. I've been thinking, perhaps you're right. There really is nothing more I can do. I'll see that he gets a good solicitor, of course. Well, that's very generous of you, George. And as soon as I can, I'll put the shop up for sale. Mm. And then we'll be married and we'll move to somewhere. <laughs> she did not like that. What did you say? We'll be married as soon as I can sell the shop. You can't sell it. Why not? Well, I know how you feel, but I can't stay here where but everything reminds I'm me of how you don't know how I feel. <laughs> Julie, what's the matter? I know with how you, you feel, you but to me? it doesn't matter. We live here. Our friends are here. You're it's an the, important member of the community. That's Victorian England wife, for you. They'll respect us. The fifties way. <laughs> yeah, honestly, the fifties way. <laughs> the shop is doing well here. We have money and position. Do you think I want to start again at the bottom? Not knowing anybody, not being anybody? I forbid it. Julie, you're losing your perspective. Yeah, Julie. You're losing your perspective. Your help, Get it together, Julie. Welcome, my help. Well, that's funny, George. Without me, there'd be no decision for you to make. What are you saying? You've had five years to make a decision, but your precious brother stood in the way. Well, I made it for you. He's gone, and I won't let you throw away everything I've worked for. George, listen. I did it for you, for both of us. Ba -ba -bum. Could you? Julie, I wanted you. Julie. I needed you. Heart stood between us, and I couldn't bear it any longer. But it's all over now, George. He's gone. There's just the two of us, and we'll be happy, George. You'll see. George, don't leave me, please. I'm going to find Sergeant Wilmore. George! George! How did she see this going in her mind? Like, yeah, I'm gonna kill this dude's brother, and he's gonna and be he's cool gonna with it. <laughs> He's gonna be thrilled. I just made our yeah. lives so much better. <laughs> so George, shocked and stunned as few men have had the misfortune to be, hmm. did his duty as he saw it. Bereft of brother, fiance, Turn her in. he still had a life before him. Time would heal these scars, but... But would it ever bring to him an understanding of how he could have seen his brother's death? I don't know. Do you? Wait, so did he stay with her? Or... Please join me again for another journey into the world. You didn't make that clear. Unexplainable, which lies behind the veil. Time heals all scars, no. but like, did that mean that they got, they pushed past it? I hope he turned, he didn't say he turned her in. I fucking hate this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what kind of ending is this? I well, hey, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know it was that inconclusive. I I thought I thought at least she got turned in. Or... He's like, hmm, how interesting, and then just sits down. Yeah, well, that was almost like a one step beyond ending. That was better than a one step beyond ending, honestly. If that was a John Newland ending, it would have been. But how did he see the vision? We don't know. <laughs> well, a 
then you know that yeah. well karloff did kind of ponder that but he yeah didn't, I, I guess he did kind of say the same but thing. it wasn't uh i don't know it was it was just kind of like okay she did it but like and he saw it but like okay what next but there wasn't really a next it was like i did it and we'll it's never like, know yeah so but still i mean fun i think i think that that you know with the that was more of almost a comedy inclined episode it really was know? yeah um and, the, and that was good the comedy <laughs> was fun comedy i mean it was slant. yeah it was good yeah was, i mean anything that uh you know evokes python like that it, you know gets a thumbs up we in can, my yeah book. oh absolutely i mean we have fun to turn it. this around and say that your crime was lesser <laughs> yeah. like, all right yeah it's just like poaching and you know it's just it's like a bit it was just like <laughs> all, it all of a sudden all these monty python bits came out of nowhere uh, but it's still i mean even with the ending being eh so so a lot of fun and uh you know karloff again taking center stage which is kind of it's not the norm for these anthology shows, you know, it's not like John Newland was in every episode of, right. And it's not like Rod. Well, I mean, outside of the host stuff, they're not acting in every episode. It's not like Rod Serling is acting in every episode of twilight zone. And even when Boris Karloff did his later series, I think he acted a couple times in it, but he, he, he really just hosted. So this is kind of a little unique in that the host is actually also playing a role in every episode. Yeah. So I don't Double know. Booked. Yeah. And I don't know what hand Karloff really had over like the actual production, like what say he had over the characters that he played or the material or anything like that. But like, I don't know that this is like how much of this is Karloff's show, but it, I mean, it's certainly with the, the roles that he's playing and the, prominence of what he's doing it's like very much a karloff vehicle so it's tv vehicle and it's sad it never got shown but the the television studio went bankrupt and the television studio was hal roach studios which that might that name might sound familiar to some viewers out there uh who are fans of classic uh cinema hal roach produced the little rascals uh, shorts and he he did um he did laurel and hardy and he did all these other comedy i think he did the keystone cops no he didn't do keystone cops i'm wrong on that but he did he did all uh, like a lot of comedy teams and but little rascals were was his like most famous creation and this uh he didn't produce this show i think his son did but then their studio went bankrupt and then this show never got released so um but you know we're we're getting to enjoy it now and it's in the public domain so um i thought that was fun i thought that was a good episode good the the production value on this seems Mm. you know it's higher than one step beyond maybe yeah which is i would agree yeah i think you guys are right and i think that's kind of it's kind of weird because i don't know <laughs> again the fact that the studio went bankrupt i don't know the resources <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what resources they were working with but it must have been more than whatever alcoa had to give out for one step beyond <laughs> Um, I guess that if you're a television production company, you're more inclined to produce a quality television show than say an aluminum manufacturer, but that's just, you know, anybody can be involved in television. It doesn't matter. You can be a television company or you can be an aluminum company, but if you've got money, you can be in television. Um, but you know. You can also have no money in these, and nowadays you can have no money and be doing television, i.e., this show. I consider right. our I consider our show television. I don't know about you guys, but like when people ask what the show is, and some people are like, "Is it a podcast?" and I'm like, "Well, but it's got a visual component, so it's it's not right. it's, you know." It, I, so, I I I catch myself thinking of it like radio, but then I like 
catch myself and I say, well, no, it's not radio because there's movie visual yes <laughs> yeah. so it's i think of it it's almost like it might as well be a tv show and you know again as we said earlier our overhead is zero uh you know zero budget but that's you know it's we sometimes have better production values than one step beyond i would say but i think that the veil yeah i think they had good production value and i think that helps i mean i think Again, we're only one episode in, so I'm not going to compare it too much to One Step Beyond or to Twilight Zone. But I think to an extent, you can kind of compare the quality to Twilight Zone. You know, it's it's not quite... I mean, again, Twilight Zone is cream of the crop as far as these horror, paranormal, supernatural anthologies go. So, I, the, the- Twilight Zone really nailed the twist, too. Yeah, they really did. And that's one thing that I... This, I I was waiting for their... I was waiting for the thing, you know? Like, he has another vision, and then that's what... That would have been good. Yeah, and I don't think many of these episodes have that kind of... I, I think you're right. I think that is what Twilight Zone really perfected, because that's also what was missing from One Step Beyond. But I think that here... Yeah, I think... I don't think we're getting that, but Twilight Zone is, you know, they really did perfect the art of the twist. And, you know, again, this is a nice middle ground, and yet it was before either of those shows ever existed. So it's cool. It's cool. We're going to get to spend the next uh, nine weeks after this one uh, enjoying the show. So I'm very excited. Um I appreciate you guys joining me as always. Some wonderful, wonderful yeah. insights into episode one of 10 of The Veil. Uh, Want to go ahead and thank everybody who tuned in tonight, joined in on the chat. It is, you know, it, we're kicking off season three here. It's always... Um, you know, again, we're also streaming now on YouTube. So we are, you know, it's just getting bigger and better. And we are very excited for what the season holds. So uh, you can join us this Friday for the premiere of the mainstream. We're going to be watching. So if you've been keeping score at home, you might have noticed on the last episode of the mainstream of season two, I said we would be watching a, a br- the brain that wouldn't die. That's wrong. We are going to, I've changed the lineup and uh, we're going to be watching Spider Baby, which is a 1968 uh, horror comedy starring Lon Chaney Jr., and it's an amazing film. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're we're going to have a lot of fun with this movie. I cannot wait to show it on the stream. So you can catch us on Twitch or on YouTube on Friday at 9 p.m. for Don't miss it. Spider Baby, the season three premiere. Do not miss it. Uh, we're going to be having uh, also as we do. A nice drink pairing to go with Spider Baby in a little segment which we call What Were You Drinking? What were you drinking? What were we drinking? What are we going to be drinking? Uh, I'm excited about this one. So every week we do a a new cocktail. This week's cocktail we're uh, doing Spider Cider. Mm. Which... Uh, great name. I, I pretty much picked it just from the name alone, but it actually sounds pretty good. So it is uh, some spiced rum mixed with apple cider. You can do... I, I've seen a couple different variations on this. Um, you know, a, a splash of either orange juice or if you want to do like cherry. Uh, I think we're going to go with the orange. Nice. And then a couple dashes of apple pie spice. Ooh. So Which, this is, if you this is on going the, to be interesting. I posted the uh, recipe on Instagram and I just put cinnamon sugar uh, instead of apple pie spice, because I figure what is it's apple fine. spice? I think that's it's the same just thing. cinnamon and sugar. Um, 
Yes, I'm very, we, we, you know, I don't know where our viewers are out there um, in the world, but where we're at, it's kind of getting a little cold for uh, this time of year. Not cold, but it's a little more, a little more chilly. A little it's, more... it's feeling a little autumnal this week. We are getting there, which is not normally like this in our neck of the woods. It usually stays hot and sticky all the way through August. It isn't until September that we start getting. Fuck is autumnal, dude. I just... we start... He's all these big words on me, bro. Hints, I can't keep. Hints of autumn. Um, autumn is we are it's it's coming more quickly uh in our neck of the woods than usual and we're you know at least I, this week at we're least, gonna enjoy it while we have it at least this week well but isn't also and again i just this is also a sign of where the seasons are are heading and we're changing it's it's pumpkin spice uh time right isn't that that's, that's true. coming up it's it's coming up it's like in a couple days so i mean we're pretty much right on it as i think the drink is perfectly timing the you know getting the spices we, we're getting a little cold. although i will be i will go i'll go ahead and spoil it on friday i am going to be wearing a tank um it's my wolfman tank because it's a lon cheney jr movie so if you see me shivering and i'm cold um just know that it's out of my respect for lon cheney jr that i'm wearing a tank top even you though tanked up boy the tanked weather, up. yes i'm going to be tanked up even though the weather is kind of getting it is getting a little chilly here so i don't know um you know and that drink will probably warm me up pretty good. I'm very excited for uh, the spider cider. It should be delicious. Spider cider. And again, you can find that recipe on our Instagram page, which is at Screamstream Show. That is also our Twitter handle at Screamstream Show. We, I'm, I'm trying to get more active on those things, trying to do a little more uh, there <laughs> this week. We, we got a little uh, starting to do trivia on our Instagram page. Uh, you know, one, one little trivia question each week to go along with the movie. Uh, you know, on, uh, on Twitter, uh, you know, gonna just try, just trying to find things to, because again, the conversation is not even just limited to the two and a half hours that we spend on Fridays or the hour, hour and a half that we spend on Wednesdays, you know, conversation can always continue. So, uh, please, you know, chime in on the socials. We're out and about. Um, and again, we're coming to you live now on YouTube as well. So our, it's, you know, I wish that we just had a YouTube handle with some terrible combination of letters and numbers if you want to check out our youtube page but you can go and find that you can go look us up on youtube we're there you have to have 100 subs i think to get your own you do yeah it's something handle. like that we'll get there a lot we'll, of sandwiches a lot of sandwiches but we'll get that punch card all punched out and you know eventually <laughs> they'll they'll give us that url but until then you just go on youtube search us you can find past episodes you can now watch us live there so you know i know for some people it might have been hard to watch on twitch to go and create an account all that bs if it's easier for you to go to YouTube now, you can do that. If you have been watching us on Twitch, you can keep watching us on Twitch. We're still here. We're, we're doing both. We are multi-streaming. So, um, and I hope that's worked well tonight. Across the stream. I don't know how that, I don't know if technically that has gone okay tonight. I hope that it has. Uh, <laughs> I'll find out when I get off here. Um, but I figured to be I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure dude. it's fine. I figured to be a nice dry run. Go ahead and you know do it before <laughs> Friday. Um, so I'll see. And if there are any, if the gremlins have got in and you know changed some, changed some settings or torn out some wires, I'll you know go and bash those gremlins on the head and and you know patch things up, and we'll be ready to go on Friday. So, um. Uh, boys, do you ah? I did it again. Oh no! Damn, <laughs> oh, there's the blood. Men, uh, all right, men. Do you have anything before <laughs> we sign off? Sir, no, sir. Uh, no. All right. Dang. Well, 
thank you everybody so much for joining us tonight catch us on friday or catch us next wednesday until then sweet screams everybody and to all a good fright <laughs> <laughs>